Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to today's web conference my name is Devesh Nangya and I'll be serving as your moderator today you will be hearing a session from Wei Chen he is a Microsoft certified trainer and a solution specialist he will be addressing the topic on this very timely subject MB300 Microsoft Dynamics 365 Unified Operation Core Furthermore, if you are facing any other audio or a video issues, please post in your queries in the Q&A panel and I am here to answer all your queries. Also, your technical questions will be answered by your trainer, so please feel free to ask those as well. Now, I would like to turn today's event over to your presenter, Weichen, you can take it from here now. Hello everyone. In today's session, we will review how to prepare a business application exam of the MB-300 Microsoft Dynamics 365 Unified Operation Core. This is fundamental of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations Functional Consultant Associate Certification. My name is Wei Chen. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer and a Solution Specialist. Here is my contact information. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions about prepared exam. In this session, we will first introduce Microsoft Azure Certification Overview, then follow with technical content presentation. At the end, we will review sample practice questions and review learning resources that will help us to prepare the exam. Now, let's start Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation Functional Consultant Associate Overview. Microsoft Business Application Certifications are now structured with fundamental exam and role-based exam. Candidates need to be finished both exams then to be certified as Functional Consultant Associate. In today's training, we will review how to prepare MB-300 Dynamics 365 Unified Operating Core, the fundamental exam. After candidate pass this fundamental exam, then she or he needs to further take role-based exam in order to be certified as functional consultant associate. There are three role-based associate exams. MB-310 Financial Functional Consultant Associate, MB-320, Manufacturing Functional Consultant Associate, and MB-330, Supply Chain Management Functional Consultant Associate. Here is an example of learning paths to be certified as Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations, Financial Functional Consultant Associate. Candidate first needs to prepare and pass fundamental exam MB-300 Dynamics 365 Unified Operation Core, which will require following knowledge and skills, common functionality and implementation tools, security, process and options, data migration, validation and support. Then, Candidates need to prepare and pass role-based exam, which is MB-310, Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations, Financials, which will require test following knowledge and skills. Set up and configure financial management module. Manage and apply common process of daily financial management. Account payable and account receivable process, budgeting management, and fixed assets management. As, as I mentioned earlier, candidate must pass both these two exams, then will be certified as Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations Financial Functional Consultant Associate. In New MB300 Dynamics 365 for Financial and Operations Unified Operation Core Exam, there are four to 60 questions. 
Most questions answer worth one point, but some might worth more than one point. Candidate must answer all questions, and some questions cannot be skipped. It will be no penalty for guessing if we really do not know the correct answers. During that, if we are not sure of our answer, we can always mark the question for later review. Total exam will be three hours, thirty minutes for exam instructions, comments, score reporting, and hundred fifty minutes to answer forty to sixty questions. The new MB series exam will not only have multiple choice, but also include build list. Let candidate to put action tasks in right sequence order to make correct answer based on active screenshot. Drag and drop correct answer to match question. Microsoft also introduced case studies in new role based MB series exam. Candidate will be given detailed information about business background, business process, existing business situation. And new business requirement with Dynamics Three Sixty Five finance and operations implementations. It requires candidate fully understand and integrate information across multiple sources, just like we do at our client during implementation. Then determine what is the best decision or choice to meet requirement in question. MB Three Hundred. Dynamics Three Sixty Five Unified Operation Core Exam will check candidate following four area of knowledge. Twenty to twenty five percent of question will test knowledge of use common functionality and implementation tools. Forty to fifty percent of question will test knowledge of configure security, process, and options. Fifteen to twenty percent of questions will test knowledge of perform data migration. Fifteen to twenty percent of question will test knowledge of validate and support solutions. There are five sessions in this MB three hundred Dynamics three sixty five Unified Operation Core Exam preparing courses. Our first day session. We will learn following topics: overview of finance and operation functionality, understanding navigation in finance and operations, use features of finance and operation with workspace, understand general data protection regulation (GDPR) compliance in finance and operations. Understand the functionality and the tools of lifecycle service for finance and operations. Learn how to reuse existing assets, copy, and share data within implementation projects. Understand task record functionality. Learn to create business process model. On Saturday session, we will learn following topics. Understand different. Types of reports and inquiries in finance and operations. Learn about the financial reporting, use inquiry, and the reports in financial and operations. How to configure finance and operations for Power Platform products. Overview of Microsoft Dynamics Three Sixty Five Unified Operation mobile apps. Understand different. Workflow types for business process. Learn to create and set up workflows. Use work items functionality. Set up and configure legal entities in Dynamics Three Sixty Five for finance and operations. On third day session, we will learn following topics. Understand security architecture of finance and operations. Learn to manage users and security. Understand segregation of duties and how to set up and apply segregation of duties. 
learn how to run security reports, describe and apply user options, learn to differentiate between customization and personalization, understand create, export, and import personalization, learn how to create and maintain record templates. On fourth day session, we will learn following topics. Understand Microsoft Office integration in Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. How to configure email, SMTP, and Exchange Server. Create and maintain email templates. Learn to use Power BI in Dynamics 365 and finance operations. Understand how to set up network printing. Integrate data from multiple sources into common data service for apps. Understand BYOD feature. Perform a test migration and validate output. On fifth, the last day session, we will learn following topics. Understand data management and integration by using data entities. Learn how to work with data management workspaces. Understand templates in data management. Learn export, import, and copy data into a legal entities. Create and perform test cases for user acceptance testing in BPM library. Get ready to go live. Now, let's get started with Dynamics 365 for finance and operations and the life cycle services. Here is the agenda. Overview of finance and operations functionality. Understand the functionality and the tools of lifecycle services for finance and operations. Reuse existing assets, copy and share data. Understand task record functionality. Create a business process model. Prepare documentation for gathered requirement by using a methodology in lifecycle services, LCS. Create a functional design document, FDD. Before we explore Dynamics 365 business applications, we need to understand digital transformation. Digital transformation is the integration of digital technology into all area of the business. The goal of digital transformation is to change how organization operate and deliver value to customers. Dynamics 365 business application empower organizations to digitally transform their organizations and remove the complexity of different CRM and ERP system by creating modern modular business applications that work together on a single platform, giving organization the flexibility to adopt technology when they need to improve business outcome. By leveraging Dynamics 365 business application organizations, we can engage customer and build relationship, fundamentally reimagining how we engage with customers, create personalized marketing, sales, and services experience using data and intelligence to improve every interaction. Optimize operations, improve service, drive efficiencies, and reduce costs with intelligence and the prescriptive guidance infused throughout our business process. Empower employees, attract, high, and engage the best talent and inspire them to be their best work with the 
data and insights surfaced right where they work. Transform product and services. Use data as a strategy asset. Identify new market opportunities. Produce innovative products and create exceptional customer experiences with a comprehensive view of our customers and operations. Okay, let's first look at Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations Workloads Overview. There are three workloads focus in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Industries, Manufacturing, Distribution, Service, Retail, Operations, Talent, Human Resources, Project Accounting Management, Expense Management, Supply Relationship Management, Salesforce Automation, Customer Care, Marketing Automation, Administrative, which talk about two ERP fundamental dollar cost, revenue, and people. Finance and Operation Overview. Finance and Operations helped business adapt quickly to changing marketing the demands and the drive rep business growth. It supports global organizations by managing multiple sites operations through shared mass data and the business process in a single instance. It is designed to support operational workloads for different industry as illustrated above. Manufacturing. Finance and operations provides rich functionality for production control and mass planning in process manufacturing, discrete manufacturing, and lean manufacturing industries. In addition, a blended approach can be taken so all three technology and methodology are used in one implementation, which is called unified manufacturing, also known as mixed model manufacturing. Distribution. For distribution industry, Finance and operations offer rich warehouse and transportation management functionality to help with trucking and warehouse operations such as picking through wireless device. The inventory management module offers rich functionality to help configure items and a warehouse to maximize productivity. Retail. For retail industry, Finance and operations supports brick and model stores by offering a rich point of sales application out of the box. There is deeper functionality for call centers, including customer service and a payment functionality embedded right into application. Additionally, the e-commerce solution offers website platform and out of box sites that can kick dot e-commerce integration. Finance management. The financial management functionality in finance and operations provides fast, reliable, and comprehensive accounting, financial report, and analysis. It also provides the functionality that organizations need to be efficiently update accounts and comply with reporting requirements. Public sectors. For public sector, there are many features that have been designed specially to help meet the demand requirements for financials such as fund accounting, grants, and advanced project account man functionality. Services. For the services industry, there are tools for advanced dispatching, subscriptions, and project counting to help pull everything together into one place to allow easier management. Employee management. An agile employee management system can help company quickly develop their organizations to meet the challenge of the a fluctuating business environment. 
finance and operations streamlines many routine record keeping tasks and automates several processes that are related to staffing our organization. It also provides a framework for human resources staff to manage areas of oversight. This area include employee recruitment and retention, benefits administration, training, performance review, and change management. In a single solution, finance and operations help enterprise meet their business requirement easily with deliberately built capabilities for the following industries, manufacturing, finance, distribution, financial management, retail, employee management, public sector, and services. In addition, the same single solution can support specific business requirements easily by extending the industry foundation with packaged vertical solution from the Microsoft partner networks. The financial management functionality in finance and operations provides fast, reliable, and comprehensive accounting, financial reporting, and analysis. It also provides all the functionality that we need to update accounts efficiently and comply with the reporting requirements. It consists of the following modules. General Ledger. Use General Ledger to define and manage the legal entity's financial records. The General Ledger is a register of debit and credit entries. Cash and bank management. We can use cash and bank management to maintain the legal entity's bank accounts and financial instruments that are associated with those bank accounts. These instruments include deposit slips, checks, bill exchange, and promissory notes. We can also reconcile bank statements and print bank data on the standard reports. Tax. The sales tax framework supports many types of indirect tax, such as sales tax, value-added tax, VAT, good and service tax, GST, unit-based fee, and withholding tax. These taxes are calculated and documented during purchase and sales transactions. Periodically, they must be reported and paid to tax authorities. Account payable. We can set up account payable, configure vendor invoices and vendor payments and perform settlement. Account receivable. We can set up account receivable, credit and collections, payments, and perform settlement. Credit and collections. Credit and collections manager can use this central view to manage collections. Collections agent can begin the collections process from custom lists that are generated by using predefined collection criteria or from customer page. Budgeting. With proper budgeting process, business can benefit from forecasting and financial insights to compare actual against allocated budget. We can use this module for basic budgeting, budget planning, and budget control. Fixed assets. Fixed assets are items of value, such as buildings, vehicles, land, and equipment, which are owned by the individual or organizations. Consolidations. Financial reporting can consolidate multiple companies during report generation. Also, the data is stored in the data mart, is versioned and can be exported. Every resource company is the owner and the container of the data. The report can be run at any time, even every minute, for example. It provides many additional benefits, such as the ability to drill down to all company and dimensions. Cost accounting. 
cost accounting lab, we collect data from various sources, such as the general ledger, sub-ledger, budgets, and the statical information. We can then analyze, summarize, and evaluate cost data so that management can make the best possible decisions for price updates, budgets, cost control, and so on. Expense management. We can use expense management to create an integrated workflow flow where we can store payment method information, import credit card transaction, and track the money that employees spend when they incur expense for our business. We can also define expense policies and automate the reimbursement of travel expense. Cost management. Cost management let we work with valuation and accounting of raw material, semi-finished goods, finished goods, and working progress assets. It is process of defining, managing, and reporting inventory accounting and manufacturing accounting. We can define cost policy in the following areas. Predefined costs, or sometimes called predetermined costs, inventory accounting, manufacturing accounting, indirect cost accounting, ledger integration, public sector, Use public sector functionality to meet the rules, regulations, and reporting requirements for organizations that serve the public. Finance and operations streamlines many routines, record keeping tasks, and automate several processes that are related to staffing our organization. It also provides framework for human resources, HR staff, to manage areas of oversight. This area include employee recruitment and retention, benefit administration, training, performance review, and change management. We can use finance and operation to perform these tasks. Define an administrator organizational structure. Maintain comprehensive worker information from high to retire. Define and administrate employee benefit plans. Enrollment worker. Assign dependent coverage and designate beneficiaries. Establish long-term leave policies. Implement and track profile-based time management and generate pay information to export the payroll system. Manage work competencies. Review performance and implement worker goals. Set up, deliver, and analyze training courses that include agendas, sessions, and tracks. Recruit workers and track applicants. Typically, after a company set a budget for new positions, it will create job and positions in finance and operations. Depend on system setup, this process might already be done at the point when jobs and positions are created. A recruitment project can be created to help set up applicants for the positions. Applicants will complete their applications in the system. After hiring decision is made, a worker can be hired. After a worker is hired, several tasks must be performed to maintain the worker's information. Here are some examples. Entering benefits and compensation. Create goals for the worker. Entering competence for the workers creating a injury or illness cases if an accident occurs. Expense management. Use expense management in finance and operations to create an integrated workflow where we can store payment 
methods, information, import credit card transactions, and tracking the money that employees are spending when they incur expense for our business. We can also define expense policies and automate the reimbursement of travel expenses. Time and attendance. Time registration worker can enter different type of time registrations. For example, clock in, clock out, register in direct activities, and absence registrations. Questionnaires. We can customize a questionnaire to fit our specific requirement by using various features that are available in finance and operations. Here are some examples of how questionnaire can be used. Test professional skills of employee and applicants. Evaluate whether course participants learned the course's material. Evaluate a course, for example, the facilities content and instructor. Survey employee and the customer satisfaction. Evaluate employee job performance. Payroll. The payroll functionality and the module in finance and operations is currently only available in the United States. Supply chain management in finance and operations helps business manage materials, information, and transactions as they move through the process from the vendor to the manufacturer and then to the retailer, and finally to the end customer. The three goals of supply chain management are reduce inventory, lowering costs, improving time to market. The following module in finance and operations supports supply chain management flow. Procurement and sourcing. Procurement and sourcing covers all the steps from in the identifying the need for product and service through producing the product, receipts, invoice, and the processing of the payment with vendor. Procurement process can be configured towards specific business needs by defining purchasing policy and the workflow. Sales and marketing. We can use sales and marketing to obtain, store, and use various types of data in the sales flow. This data include the original sales initiatives, future follow-up actions, and additional sales. Product information management. Product information management is a backbone of supply chain and retail applications across all industry. It refers to process and a technology that focus on centrally managing information about the products, for example, across supply chain. It's important that shared product definitions, documentation, attributes, and identifiers to be used. In the various modules of business solution, product specific information and configuration are required to manage the business process that are related to specific product, product families, or product category. Master planning. Mass planning allow company to determine and balance the future needs for raw materials and the capacity to meet company goals. Mass planning assess the following. What raw material and the capacity are currently available? What raw material and capacity are required to complete product production? For example, what must be manufactured, purchased, transferred, or set aside as a safety stock before we can complete production? Production control. Finance operations provide rich functionality for production control and mass planning in the process manufacturing, discrete manufacturing, and lean manufacturing environments. A blended approach can be taken 
So all three technology and the methodology are used in one implementation. This is known as unified manufacturing or mixed mode manufacturing. Inventory management. We can control inbound and outbound operations as well as perform quality control management and inventory control. Warehouse management. Warehouse management is fully integrated with our business process in finance and operations such as transportation, manufacturing, quality control, purchase, transfer, sales, and returns. Transportation management. Transportation management let us use our company's transportation and let we identify vendor and role team solutions for inbound and outbound orders. For example, we can identify the fastest way roads or latest expenses rate for a shipment. Project management accounting. Project management accounting provides strong platform to help company efficiently administrate project and achieve the result that they want. As the demand for faster and better service increases, so does the pressure to automate process and balance costs associated with the projects and the services requests. For the growing number of companies that are providing service to customers, either as their core business or in addition to their products, the challenge is to effectively manage knowledge, opportunities, and resources. Project accounting provides strong platform to help companies efficiently administrate project and achieve results that they want. Audit workbench. We can use audit policy to evaluate expense reports, value invoice, and purchase orders to make sure that they comply with policies roles that we create. All the roles that are associated with an audit policy are run in batch mode according to the schedule that we specify. Each policy role is an instance of policy role type. For each policy role type, only one policy role can be active at a time. Okay, now let's get understand Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations user interface. Action pane, the bar beneath the navigation bar. Here, we can select tabs to change records shown in the page. We can edit and save the record in here. Fact box. We can see information and follow activities of certain record in this pane. Fact box pane. Here, we can scroll through different aspects of the record to view in the fact box. Filter pane. On some pages, we can select show filters to open this pane. It allow we to narrow the result visible to we on the page. Navigation bar. The bar at the top of the interface, it contains the Dynamics 365 portal, search, company picker, action center, setting, help and support, and the user profile. Navigation list. On some pages, we can scroll through this pane to find aspect record. When selected, the detail of the record will appear in the page. Navigation pane. The leftmost pane. From here, we can find any page in the product. Page. The central focus of the interface. Selections made on other UI components will affect what record are shown here. 
pen, the rightmost pen. This will open in some cases where aspect of record need to be changed and saved. Tab. When referring to action pen, it's a menu of option that appears when we select a given option in the action pen. Other user interface element includes tab fields and sections. A tab is a selection made on the page that opens different aspects of record on the same page. Often, it will allow you to change certain fields or UI elements that allow type input. A fast tab is a tab with the added benefit of allowing multiple tabs to be visible at the same time. We can expand the fast tab by selecting the downward point arrow on the right end of it. A section is similar to a tab. The word section is often used to describe any area of the page that organizes a specific category of the information. In the following image, summary, order, and favorite, and the links are all examples of a section. Toolbar, grids, and lists. A toolbar contains tools such as the ability to add fields or remove records. Sometimes the toolbar will appear on the page above a grid. This area, grid is name given to rows of the records which varies columns of data. Not all grids have a toolbar above them. A list is the name given to collection of records that you can scroll through. You can bring these records into a page by selecting them. Often, this will open in a grid. Now, let's do a quick demo about Dynamic 365 Finance Operations Navigation Dashboard Workspace Tile and search. Microsoft Dynamic 365 Finance and Operations Navigations. When you open that Microsoft Dynamic 365 Finance and Operations, on the top is the menu bar, and the, you can see the Dynamic 365 task pane by click the dot, nine dot buttons, and uh, this is Finance Operation Home buttons. When you navigate away from Another to the another forms, you always can click this button, go bring you back to the home page. The middle one is a power search. And if I type in V space I, system will immediately list all the forms. First word start V and the second word start I. For example, here is vendor information or vendor invoice entries. In the right, it is showing the company you're currently logging. If you click this one, and you'll be able to switch the company a legal entity you need to work to. And the bell button is showing the message system will indicate to you if you have some message or some posting successful or some uh, posting error. It's kind of info log uh, message button. The gear button is setup button. From here, you can do your user previous uh, set up, make a task recorder, and set up mobile, mobile apps. Question mark is the support and help button. And from here, you'll be able to send feedback to Microsoft, view, view a help menus, open a support cases to Microsoft, send ideas, improve an idea to Microsoft, and trace and view Dynamics 365 finance operation versions. At the very right is your login account name. And from here, you'll be able to sign out. In the top of the content is a company banner and the company name. 
you can change it to logo type. Underneath is the system session calendars showing current date. And uh, after that is all the working item assigned to you by somebody else. For example, workflow approval tasks. In the middle section is all the tiles of workspaces. If you click the navigation button, it will bring you all the sessions include your favorite form you are going, you're always using, your recent visit forms, workspace, and the modules. From modules, when you click the modules, it will show in the module menus. As we know, features are added and updated in every release of Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. The feature management experience provides a workspace where we can view a list of features that have been delivered in each release. By default, new features are turned off. We can use the workspace to turn them on and view documentation for them. We can open the feature management workspace by selecting the appropriate tile on the dashboard. We will see a page that shows a list of features are uh, all releases that are required supported by the feature management experiences. Over time, Microsoft will enhance the feature management experience so that it includes additional functionality to help you manage features. If a feature hasn't been turned on, an Enable Now button appears in the detail pane. We can use this button to turn on features. Some features cannot be turned off after we turn them on. If the feature that we are trying to turn on cannot be turned off, we receive a warning at that moment, we then can select cancel to cancel the operation and leave the feature turned off. However, if we select enable to turn on the feature, we won't be able to turn it off later. If a feature has been scheduled to be turned on in the future, a schedule button appear in the detail pane. We can use this button to change the enable that date value to a different date. If a feature has already been turned on, a disable button appears in the detail pane. We can use this button to turn off the feature, but the disable button isn't available if the feature cannot be turned off after it's turned on. After feature is turned off, a message appears below the learn more link in the detail pane. This message states that the feature hasn't been yet turned on. It appears every time that we select the feature in the feature list. Feature that haven't been turned on appear on the not enable tab. Action search will help us find and run actions on a page. For example, if we type TOT in the action search field and are now examining the result list, the first entry for a button that named totals is highlighted, a button pass of sales order view is also shown. The sales order part of the pass correspond to the sales order tab on the action pane, and the view part of the pass corresponds to the view group on the tab. Similarly, the pass of total discount button, sell, calculate, informs us that this button is located in the Calculate group on the Cell tab of the Action Pane. Therefore, this information helps us understand exactly which button 
will be triggered by action search. If we select that button in the result list, if the previous example action search should result from standard action pane at the top of the page. However, action search also show result from visible toolbars that are located in other place on the page. For example, we are searching for the on hand inventory button that is located on the sales order lines faster. In this case, the button pass in the result not list sales order line inventory view inform us that this button is located under view heading on inventory menu button on the sales order lines fast tab. The global address book GAB is a centralized repository for mass data that must be stored for all internal and external persons and organizations that the company interacts with. When an address changes, the update only needs to be made in one place. All the other associate records are updated automatically. In this module, we will learn what the global address book is, how the global address book works, how to plan for the global address book and the other address book. The data that is associated with party records includes the party's name, address, and contact information. Other details vary depend on whether the party is persons or an organization. Each party record is associated to a party and each party can be associated with one or more party roles in a company. Party role include customer, prospect, worker, user, vendor, competitor, applicant, and contact. Party role, role that are associated with party record are referred to as party roles. There are several party roles and they can be assigned to both party types, person and organization. Here are definition for each party role. Customer, individual company or other entities who purchase goods and services that are produced by other individuals, companies, or entities. Prospect, a party that might provide service or benefit to a legal entity. Worker, a person who assumes the role an employee or a contract and who is paid in exchange for services. Vendor, a party that supplies product to one or more legal entity in exchange for payment. Competitor, a person or organization that provide goods or services that are similar to the goods or services that our business provides. Applicant, a person who make a formal written or electronic request to work for or fill an open position in an organization. Contact, a person either inside or outside our organization that we have created an entry for. In this entry, we can save information such as person street and the email address, telephone number and the fax number and web page URL. We need to consider many scenarios where we make decisions during the planning process before we set up and configure global address book and any additional address books in finance and operations. Some of the decisions will require that we confirm the decisions that have been made for other areas of the product, such as organization hierarchy. 
Before we begin to work with the global address book, we must determine the default value for it. This default value are then used for any additional address book that we create. The following are some examples of decision that we need to make. What sequence should name be displayed for party record of the person type? For example, one sequence is last name, middle name, and first name. Should party record be deleted from the address book when the role record is deleted? For example, if a custom record is deleted, should a party record also be deleted? When new record is created, should user be notified if the duplicate record is found in the global address book? Should data universal numbering system, DUNS, number be included in the party records information? If the DUNS number is included in the party record, should a sequence of the number be checked? When party record is created in the global address book, do we want default party type person or organizations? Which user role should have access to the private address book and contact information of the party records? After we create a global address book, we can create additional address books if needed, such as separate address book for each company in our organization or for each line of business. To configure global address book, go to organization administration, select global address book, click menu link of address books, then click new button. The IT manager must make decision regarding how many additional address books need to be created. We can create an address book and set security parameters for the address books at any time we aren't required to set a security privilege for an address book. But if we don't, all workers in our organization can view all party records in that address book. We can set security privilege to party records through the address book. Security privilege are based on teams. This approach ensures that only worker who assign to a team that has access to the address book can view the party record in that address book. We may, must select the team that have access to each address book. For each address book, we can set a security privilege that allow or deny access to specific teams. If we grant team privilege to an address book, all members of the team can view the record in address book. If we don't grant team access to the address book, the member of the team cannot view the address book or its content. Okay, now let's review lifecycle service for Dynamics 365 finance and operations. Lifecycle service, LCS, is a central repository for most of the tools that we use to prepare and deploy a project for finance and operations. LCS is a cloud-based collaboration workspace where all the key information about the project is stored. This information can include information about project phases and collective response to named and assets library. All this information can be made available to project members. The LCS project workspace provides an outline map knowledge showing each phase of our project and provides high level milestone that are used to track deliverable and project goals. 
as the project progress, environment can be deployed from within LCS. The project deployment tools allow environments of different size to be deployed and controlled from within the project. The unified control of cloud-based environment within LCS allow environments deployment from within LCS to be monitored and controlled. LCS provides environment aware tools to search for issue that may be occur within the environment. Search for knowledge basis issues with no, no fixes and apply the fixes to environment in the control manner. Let's get familiar with tool available in LCS. This tool assist we to manage the lifecycle services of finance and operations implementation. The following list highlights the tools that are provided in LCS and the description of the phases that each tool applies to. Projects. Projects are the key organizer for our experience in LCS and let we invite our colleagues, partners, and customers to collaborate with we and they also let track progress. Methodologies. Methodologies provide a tool that we can use to ensure more repeatable, predictable implementation projects. We can use one of our methodologies or create our own methodology. By using methodology, we can easily track and report our progress. A methodology is a systematic analysis of method applied to achieve one or many goals. There are many methodologies available in LCS that we can benefit from, such as cloud and on-premises implementation and upgrade to the latest release version of the finance and operations. The assets library is a data framework that ties everything together in lifecycle services LCS project for finance and operations. It stores various types of assets for the project or organization level. The assets can be deployed through the environment. Assets type. The assets type library support multiple types of assets. Here are some assets type that we can frequently use. Software deployment package. This assets represent all the package that we used to update an environment with the latest set update. Data package. This assets type stores assets that we use for configuration and data management. GER configuration. This assets type store all the localization and the translations assets that are applied to the client. Dynamic 365 for retail SDK. This assets type store all the latest scripts for the retail software development kit SDK. Assets scope. Every assets that the assets library support has multiple scopes. Here are some the supported assets scopes. Me, when an assets is uploaded, it's set to me scope. An assets that has me scope is visible only to the person who uploaded the assets. Project. When a project is imported from the global scope to another project, it's set to a project scope. Organization. When an assets must be shared with multiple users within the tenant, the tenant admin can 
promote the access to organization scope. Global. Only Microsoft can upload assets to a global scope. These assets are made publicly available to all LCS project and users. Asset status. Every asset has one of two status. Draft. The assets can still be edited. Published. The assets is published at the organization of global scope and edit are completed. A shared assets library and the project level assets library are available in LCS for our use. Shared assets library. The shared assets library is used by Microsoft and partners to share assets across multiple tenants, projects, and environments in LCS. This library can be accessed by any user who sign into LCS. To access the shared assets library, sign in into LCS and then click the shared assets library tile. Project level assets library. The project level assets library is used to share assets across environments within a project in LCS. This library can be accessed by all users within a project. Task Recorder is a tool in finance and operations that we can use to record actions that we take in a product user interface, UI. When we use Task Recorder, all the events that we perform in the UI that are executed against the server, including adding value, change settings, and remove data are captured. Task Recorder pane. To open the Task Recorder, we can click the gear icon in the upper right corner of the Finance and Operations and select Task Recorder. The Task Recorder pane will open. Create Recording. This option allows we to create a new recording. Print Recording as Guide. We can choose this option to see what our recording looks like when we view as a help topic or played as a task guide. Edit recording. Select this option if we need to change the recording's name, description, or the text that is displayed in the steps. Playback recording. Choose this option if we need to move add or remove steps, we can also use this mode to automatically play a recording. Save to PC. This option allows we to save a recording to our computer. Save to LCS. If we have proper rights in the lifecycle service project of the instance of finance and operations, this option allows we to save a recording to an LCS library. Export as Word document. This option allows we to download the Word document that contains the list of steps in the recording. Save as developer recording. We can also choose to download the recording as a XML file. This allows a developer to use the XML file as a test file in Visual Studio. Play next panning steps. This option will cause Task Recorder to execute and record the next panning step, which is indicated by the arrow in the step list. Play to selected step. This option will cause task recording to begin playing and the recording panning steps. Beginning at the next panning step, 
and pausing after playing the steps that we select in the list. With this option, we click. This option is grayed out when a step is not selected. Play all pending steps. This option will cause task recording to play and record all remaining pending steps until there are no remaining pending steps. Start subtask. Delete steps. Add developer placeholder. Open from this PC. This option allows we to open a record that is saved on our computer. Open from lifecycle services. This option allows we to open record that has been saved on the LCS library. Open from recent. This option allows we to pick from the list the task recording that we have recently created. We can access task guide from the help pane. It's important to note that task guide will not negatively appear in the help pane unless we have already connected Lifecycle Services LCS. When we first click task guide, the help pane will show that step-by-step -step instructions for the task. To begin the guide, interactive experience we can click Start Task Guide at the bottom of the Help pin. A black point opens and indicates the action that we have to perform. Follow the directions that appear in the URL and enter data as directed. Now, let's have a quick demo about how to using task record. Task recorder is located at the top menu in the gear button, setup button. Click a cell button, you will see a task recorder. Click task recorder, system will open the task recorder engine to us. Now, when you first create a task recorder, just click create recording button and give the task recorder name called create warehouse. Steps to create a new warehouse. Then click start. Now you can start record the steps how to create warehouse. And as you can see, system will open the top banner, indicate you are start recording your warehouse. And you can always stop and review the task record steps. Let's get started. I click navigation button, move to the inventory management module. In the setup, I go to inventory breakdown and click warehouse. As you can see, system recorded my first step. Now I click new, give a warehouse name, Select the site. Select quarantine warehouse. Select transit warehouse. Then I click save. Click close. You can see system record all my step about create a new warehouse. Now I can select stop. I be able to save this task recorder to my PC and to the lifecycle services. 
and also can export to the Word document as a training menu. And further, you can save this as a developer recording so developer can easily trace your steps to find the proper code and do the developing extension. So I save to my page PC. Now I can see create warehouse dot axtr is saved in my download folder. Return to main menu. Close. Now I can use the task recorder as my task guide if to training new people. To do that, still go to setup, task recorder. Instead of click new, create a new recording, I click play recording as a guide. Open the guide from my PC, browser, find my create warehouse. Click open task guide. You can see in the right, System Dynamics 365 show me individual steps about creating a new warehouse. I can easily follow this step to create, or I even can click Start Task Guide, start to follow Dynamics 365 financial operation to create my new warehouse. For example, First step, go to inventory management, setup, inventory breakdown warehouse. I go to inventory management, setup, inventory break breakdown warehouse. Click new, type in the warehouse. Give the another warehouse, then click save. Now, just click close and finish all my task guide. I click close. If I want to modify my task recorder, I also can go to task recorder and edit the recording. So after I click edit recording, same thing. I need to open the task recorder from my saved task recorder and click start. Now system give chance to modify the task recorder by changing the name, change the detailed description, and insert new steps or deleted steps even further, can move the step up and down. And in the new steps, you also be able to put some instructions or notes for the training people. This is a demo for task recording and a task guide. Business Process Modular, BPM. In Microsoft Dynamics Lifestyle Source Services, LCS, is a tool that we can use to create, view, and modify repeatable implementations that are based on business process library and the flow charts. BPM help we align our business process in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations with industry standard processes that are described by the American Productivity and Quality Center, APQC. 
we can perform fit gap analysis between our business requirement and default process in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Additionally, we can add a new business process and create flowchart for process that aren't already defined in finance and operations. BPM is compatible with the following programs. Microsoft Word, we can generate documentation for business process. Microsoft Visual, we can export business process maps to Visual File. Business process module BPM let we create, view, and modify standard process flow by using BPM we can achieve the following goals. Standardize process flow. Align our business process with industry standard process as described by the American Productivity and the Quality Center, APQC. Identify fit and gaps between user requirements and default functionality that Microsoft Dynamics product provides. The BPM tool include public library, which we could create a copy of and use, or we can create our new own library. We should use existing business process library as a starting point and modify them according to our industry and organization needs. Before connecting to the, an LCS project, it is important to first ensure that a BPM library exists in LCS. We recommend that we ensure BPM library exists before selecting an LCS project to connect to. Setting to display order of the BPM library is the last step in connection of LCS. We can view the three types of library in BPM as follows. Global library. These are available from Microsoft and can used as a starting point to build our own. Cooperate library. These are library owned by our organization for any organization user to leverage. My libraries. These are available to user within the LCS project with appropriate accesses. The BPM library is divided into three sections. View, we can author and edit, review, and merge our hierarchy with the configuration and the data manager tools. Process hierarchy, here we can view, build our business process and requirement hierarchy. Process detail, here, we maintain more information for specific reference lines in the hierarchy and indicate details such as countries, applicables, industry applicables, and so on. Identify the fit and the gap between user requirement and the default functionality in financial operations. We can use Select BPM library as Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation Help. Open Finance and Operation and go to System Administration, Setup, System Parameter, click the Help tab to select the LCS project to connect as shown in the image. We can select BPM library within the Select project to retrieve task recording. This is where it's important to already have an existing BPM library. We can set the display order of the BPM libraries. This determines the order in which task recording from the library will appear in the help pane. When these steps have been completed, we can open the help pane in the finance and operations and click task guide tab we will see the task guide to that applied the page that we are currently on the system. If no task guide are found, we can enter keyword 
to refine our search. Following our complete task in business process module, upload a task recording. In Microsoft Dynamics Lifecycle Services, in our project, on the business process library page, first select the library, then select the process to upload the task recording to. Export that knowledge to Word. In our LCS project, on the business process library page, first select the library to export, then select the process to export, and then in the right pane, select doc to begin download. Publish a BPM library. In our LCS project, on the business process library pages, on the tile for the library that we want to copy, select the ellipse button, three dot, and then select publish. Distribute a BPM library. When we distribute a BPM library, the library will be available to all users who are a part of our organization. In other words, it will be available to all users who sign in to LCS by using our organization's domain. For example, all users who have an atcontoso.com account here are steps. Ask the customer to invite you to his or her project. Sign in to the customer LCS project by using your organization account. On the business process library page, copy library from corporate library pane to the customer project. Let's have a quick demo on business process modeling. Now, Let's have a look how to use Microsoft Dynamics 365 Lifecycle Service Business Process Modular. To use that, we need to log into Lifecycle Services. Click the project you are working at and move the bar to the very right more tools, you will see a tile called Business Process Module. Click the Business Pro Process Module. Here's the all the global library available from Microsoft. You can easily highlight the one you want to use, for example, March 2018, all language, APQC. I can click the three dot button and copy, give the name, call My Dynamics 365 for financial operations and create. And you can see this create business process library will be showing up in my project library. I also can create my own new library by click new library button and give the name. Click a print, and you can see my new library available for my project. I can click the my library and start modify my library business process. For example, I highlight this one and click edit mode, change the name, call, create a warehouse. Create a new warehouse. I can save it. And further down, I can add new process as a chart or a sampling. So in this new business process, I also can put another name, for example, Create a 
Huh? I am. And from my quit warehouse, I can add chart process, add a mode, say, create a location. And if I go back in the warehouse, I click a diagram, you can see system will bring us to a flow chart. In my environment, I don't have existing flow chart for print warehouse, but that's okay. I can always update my flow chart with the function called upload. So I can upload my task recorder, which is create warehouse. And then you can see now, when I go back to diagram, my create warehouse flow chart exists. And you also can link the video to show you how to create a warehouse. And if your standard business process has some change, you'll be able to modify the standard warehouse by adding the steps in the flow chart. This will give you a gap list for your project. You also can upload visual to flow chart in business process modular. Business processes. A business process is a collection of related structured activity and requirements with interconnection among them, and which can be represented in the flowchart comprising decision point and the dependencies. Many organizations follow the industry's specific terminology of business process. Record to report. This is described the process of the managing financial and the ledger information for many organizations. Order to cash. This describes the process of receiving and processing customer sales and its entire life cycle till their payment. Procurement to pay. This describes the process of ordering and processing vendor invoice and its entire life cycle till payment settlement. Plan to produce. This described the process of creating and building products, services, and its entire chain from demand to supply. Business processes are best described using flow and visual and have several uses, such as training, testing, solution acceptance. Each business process comprises one or many sub process in the functional domain. Sub process help in visualization inter dependence within a business process and have linked to other process. A requirement is series of activity steps within a sub process. Every organization must keep a goal of collecting the requirements as structured as possible as it smooths out the rest of the project activities to ensure success. By using the task recorder, we can capture business process and save it into a node of the BPM life, library in lifecycle services related to the project running instance of finance and operations. This will automatically create the graphical representation of the business process. When our business process are complete, we can export a business process node as a Microsoft Word document and use it as a training menu in the later phase of the project. Issue search. Issue search help us find existing solution and the work run for known issue in finance and operations. We can use issue search to search for product issues and determine whether an issue has been resolved, is open, or has a workaround. We can also issue search 
for regulatory features and determine whether a feature is available or is planned in future release. Finally, we can find regulatory white paper certifications and registrations for finance and operations. To search for issue from within a lifecycle service LCS project, click the menu button and select issue search. This will open the issue search form. Support tools. Managing incidents. This is a single window to view all our support incidents raised with Microsoft from our organization across the project. These incidents are classified as premium and non-premium and are based on our support agreement with Microsoft. Open work items. This provides a list of the currently open work items. Support issues. The project team or business user can submit an issue from within France and operation or manually create an issue in LCS. Issue can be investigated by a customer or a partner team and can also be raised to Microsoft. The following options are available on Support Issue tab. Active Issues On this tab, we can report issues as either an end user from the finance and operations client or as a developer in Azure DevOps. If needed, an active issue can be raised to Microsoft. Submitted to Microsoft. It's not required to create an active issue before we raise it to Microsoft. User with appropriate permissions in LCS can submit an issue to Microsoft directly. Service requests. Our service requests are raised with a dynamic service engineer, DSE, for any issue that is related to the production environment. Extensibility support request. If we discover a customization that cannot be implemented as an extension, we must log a request to Microsoft to ensure that appropriate extension support is added to the product for our scenario. Hotfix request. When business users encounter an issue while using finance and operations, they can search to find whether Microsoft has published any hotfix regarding to the same issue. If so, the business user can submit a request for a hotfix, which will be available under these sections. The system administrator can assign the request to IT team for further evaluation. The regression suite automation tool, RSAT, significantly reduced time and the cost of user acceptance testing. User acceptance testing is typically required before taking a Microsoft application update or apply custom code and a configuration to our Dynamics 365 for finance and operations production environment. This tool enables functional power users to record business tasks using the finance and operations task recorder and convert this recording into a suite of automated testing without the need to write source code. Test libraries are stored and distributed in lifecycle services using the business process modular library. These libraries are also fully integrated with Azure DevOps services for test execution, reporting, and investigation. Test parameters are decoupled from test steps and stored in Microsoft Excel file. Now, let's discuss how to prepare documentation for gather requirements by using methodology in lifecycle services. As functional consultant for finance and operations, we need to create business requirement document, BRD, 
a functional consultant works closely with the solution architects. A solution architect considered an expert and one of the responsibilities of solution architects is to perform requirement analysis. This is the solution access who are just with the collaboration with the team to find a solution for the customer's business problem in the form of workaround or extensions when requirement cannot be made with finance and operations out of box features. Why methodology are important? A correct sequence of tasks and ensure all required resources and artifacts are managed properly throughout the lifecycle services for finance and operations is essential for the successful implementation. Any successful implementation usually consists of five major phases. First phase is analysis. Second is design and develop. Third is test. Fourth is deploy, and the last is operate. Regardless of deployment top launch, either on the cloud or on premises, the methodology are very similar. Even through a cloud implementation is a much more reasonable solution for a better total cost of ownership. Some business might still choose to use on-premise for unique business reason. When a customer requirement cannot be achieved with out-of-box functionality of finance and operations, then we must start the analysis stage. When a requirement is must have then we need to consider customization. The focus for requirement collection should cover all the aspects of the existing business process as well as the future state of business processes. The whole requirement gathering and understanding process is a highly scientific approach that needs expertise and the ability to give attention to details, we must be able to describe future state of business process in finance and operations based on proposed solution and comparing it with out box functionality. There must always be a explicit link between business process and requirements. It should start at a high level for the coverage perspective, but the requirement must be collected in detail. Business process is a collection of related structure activities and requirement with in connection among them, some of which can be represented in a flowchart comprise decision point and dependencies. A sub-process is a level in a business process for each business process function. Detailing business function starts at, at this level. A sub-process could be detected to single function area, or it could be a cross function area as well. A requirement is a serious activities or steps with a sub-process. Organization may leverage use case scenario to explain the requirement clearly. A use cases is a pattern of behavior and sequence of related activities. Every organization must keep a goal of collecting the requirement as structured as possible. It is important that we understand the importance of creation and maintain the document process. Solution Design Document, SDD, 
it is an in-depth documentation of solution details and a solution blueprint that is represented in an end-to-end -end flow diagram showing all the solution elements that are envisioned and agreed to leverage moving forward. Business Requirement Document, BRD. After SDD is prepared, we should revisit the original business requirement document to ensure that all the business process and sub-process covered and all the requirements function and non-functional addressed. Ensure all documents are smart. It should clearly describe the project objectives in a smart, specific, measurable, achievable, repeatable, and time-bound format. Project plan. A project plan is a roadmap document on how to achieve objectives in the implementation phases. A project plan must facilitate a consistent and effective communication. The project plan must define the work breakdown structure, WBS, which identify all the work that needs to be done to complete the project. Communication plan. The plan should formally define who should be given what specific information and when the information should be delivered. Quality and acceptance plan. This plan secure acceptance of the deliverables and identifies the external dependencies as this may directly or indirectly impact the project plan. Change management plan. We need to capture the change request in a log with adequate information to answer question to why, whom, what, who, where, and when. The fit gap review. The fit gap document is the primary input document to write the FDD. It is very important to review the fit gap document in detail before starting with the FDD. Functional design document, FDD. This document describes the features of a desired customization. The document can include things such as flowchart, screenshots, wireframe, and will contain an organization list of requirement that can be used for development, testing, and client sign-off. The process of the fit gap review session is critical prior to writing FDD, the functional design document. Technical design document, TDD. After functional design document, FDD is completed and sign off. The development team needs to start write a technical design document. It includes information about the programmatic approach of how the particular requirement will be implemented. TDD are prepared primarily by the developer for the final development. Define user case scenario. It described one business process in detail, which consists of sequence of the tasks and include decisions and condition steps. Benefits of functional design document, FDD. The following are some of the benefits of functional design document. Help the development team to understand the feature and provide the clear scope and the definition of what to develop. 
This document streamlined the doc development process and the development team working on the feature has a clear understanding and answer to all their functional related questions before starting development. Because this document is approved by the customer, the developer only develop customization and extension that are approved. The FDD is work in progress, so we need to assign development and QA team to each function area. This means that we need to engage them to reviewing the functional design and support the respect business analysis earlier on. Extension is the only development model where the developer can use events and the hooks within the application code to include additional functionalities without impacting Microsoft code. Try to adopt the standard functionality as much as possible while design solution. Help testing team to understand the feature under development and to develop a testing plan according. Identify all the cross-function requirements the solution architects should lead them to suitable design. Provide the customer with the clear vision and definition of the feature being developed. Also help entire project team to be able to visualize and see the solution before it's built. Provide the baseline of the training documentation for application support team and the business users. Now let's look at project phases. Business requirement definition phases. In the definition phases of the project, the implementation team should address the following milestones, the business scenario and the process in a hierarchy format, end-to-end -end process flows, use cases, business flows, solution blueprint. After defining the scope, the implementation team should analyze each requirement in the analysis phases. Solution analysis phases. In the analysis phases of the project, the implementation team should address the following milestone. Fit gap analysis, work around and customization options, build versus buy evaluation, the SWOT, strengths, weakness, opportunity, and threats analysis for work around and customization enhancement. Solution design phase. In design phase of the project, the implementation team should address the following milestones. Out of the box capabilities to fit the business process of the solution, functional and technical design for any gaps in the present solution, end-to-end -end test scenario for overall solution acceptance and to end for the business process area. One or more task scripts per requirement. Future state solution blueprint. Prototyping. In the prototyping phase of the project, the implementation team should address the following milestone. A prototyping configuration of the business flow in the finance operations. Sample data migration. Demo data task guide, and the training videos, hands-on lab. After acceptance of the prototype, any gaps, interfaces, or reports can be assigned to the developer team. Development phases. In the development phases of the project, the implementation team should address the following milestone. Developer artificials, entity relationship, code, design, testing and acceptance phases. In the testing phases of the project,
the implement team should address the following test plan, test scenario, test cases, issue log, training phases. In the training phases of the project, the implementing team should address the following milestone. Training menus, user task guides, go live phases. In go live phases of the project, the implementing team should address the following milestone. Cut over checklist, go live readiness, environment, access, communication mailers, after successful go live, it's important to continue the journey to keep and repeat benefits from business platform while keeping in healthy. Support phases. In the support phases of the project, the implementing team should address the following milestone. Support maintenance plan. Team that spans various level of support needs. Enhancement initiatives, go to have business needs, issue portal, ongoing training, rollout initiatives, and other kinds of assistance. Now, let's quick look at some practice questions. Question one, which of following parties type cannot be used with a global address book? A, customer, B, vendor, C, person, D, competitor, E, organization. The correct answer is E, organization. Question two, if you want to change the methodology on an existing project, which two steps can you use? A, change methodology, B, project setting, C, manage methodology, D, Admin knowledge. The correct answer is A, change knowledge, and C, management knowledge. Thank you for attending session one of training on MB300 Dynamic 365 Unified Operation Core Fundamental Exam Preparing. In next session, we will teach about reporting, analytical, workflow, and legal entities. Again, to well prepare this exam, I will strongly encourage you to use Microsoft self-paced learning resources for Dynamics 365 for financial and operations, which you can find at aka.ms slash learn. Then search for product of Dynamics 365 finance and operations. Microsoft also offer multiple training and certification resources to us, such as MicroLearn, online courses, instruct lead training. We can pick any of these options which is suitable for our learning and exam preparing. Here are additional resources about MB300 exam details. Thank you.